Hi, I'm Amlikit. Hi, I'm Akshay. Hi, I'm Spurti. Hi, my name is Rishik. Hello, I'm Rajshna. Let's start with the first section, Science Tube. This section contains five very interesting videos which have topics related to science. These topics can intrigue us and shock us too. Topic 1 Reasons why rats are like us. Here are five reasons how rats are similar to humans. These facts may shock us too, but it's true. Rats have similar traits as humans. Number 1 Rats love A neuroscientist called Jock Punksep and his colleagues figured out that when rats were running around or playing with other rats, they emitted unique sounds at 50 kHz. They later identified that the rats were laughing. Number 2. Rats can think about thinking. Rats can be trained to think about what they know and what they don't using food too. Number 3. Rats are empathetic. Though it may shock you, rats feel empathy. If a rat is stuck in a restrainer, another rat would heroically try to save it, whether it's from the same species or not. Number 4. Rats are conquerors. Rats inhabit large cities, and vast cities such as New York have underground networks full of rats living off human detritus. 5. Rats contribute to science a lot. Most of laboratory tests are done on rats and mice. They have helped in the research and diagnosis of many diseases such as tuberculosis, HIV and AIDS, diabetes, seizures, Alzheimer's and cancer too. Finally, why are rats used for experimenting human medicine? Rats are small and very large in number and they can easily reproduce. They also have mostly similar biological and behavioral traits as us. So, as rats can give better results in testing potential medicines used with humans, they are used in laboratory tests. During this topic, I have observed how rats are used for diagnosing diseases and how they behave. I have inferred that because their traits are similar to humans, they are used for testing medicines potential for usage by humans. I have analyzed the characteristics of rats and how they are similar to humans. Topic 2. What makes Tyreek Hill the fastest in the NFL? Let's see how Tyreek Hill is tested to be the fastest in the National Football League. Here is what we have understood after watching the video. What makes Tyreek the fastest? His short toppy strides increase his contact with the ground, allowing him to initiate cuts and change directions while running. What experiment has he gone through? 43 young football players were challenged to run and catch Hill and grab his flag. What are the unique things that Tyreek does that the kids can't catch him? As his feet are contacting the ground frequently, he could change his direction in a split second and dodge all the kids without them even touching him. In what context are the words ground contact, vector shifts and velocity used? Ground contact refers to Tyreek's feet touching the ground frequently. Vector shift refers to Tyreek changing free direction frequently. Velocity refers to Tyreek's speed in a certain direction. How are these aspects measured? During being tested, Tyreek's movements are and speed are calculated, giving statistics of his velocity and vector shift. Here are the meanings of some of the terms used in the video. Velocity is the speed of something in a given direction. Ground contact is how much time you are in contact with the ground, and vector shift means changing directions. During learning about Tyreek Hill, I have observed how his legs were moving. He had very short legs. I have inferred that because of his short and choppy strides, he could change direction very easily. I have analyzed the statistics given in the video too. I have documented all the information and meanings in the slides. Finally, I have verified, organized and summarized all the information in this video. Topic 3: The Strand Beast of Deo Janssen. These animal-like structures can move by themselves. Dutch artist Deo Janssen says that his offspring can continue his legacy in the beaches and sand dunes. Otter strand beasts. Since 1990, Janssen has been creating strand beasts. 
Dutch for beach animals, which are moving kinetic structures, sometimes using wind propellers, that resemble walking animals, and they are described by Janssen as artificial life. Why were they made? Janssen tries to make new artificial life forms to live on the beaches and sand dunes on their own without needing sustenance. He makes clever evolving designs so that they live independently and are remembered. They can use energy available in the nature. The basic materials used for creating strand beasts are PVC pipes for structures, joints for moving, propellers for moving forward, wind designs to use wind energy, sensors for sensing water, wood, fabric airfoils and zip ties. The mechanisms used in these strand beasts are triangular kinetic structures, wind energy, axle rotation for movement and air pressure storage for movement when wind is not available. While learning about the strand beasts, I have observed how the PVC pipes were connected and how the being was moving. I have analyzed the different parts of the strand beasts. I have described the different parts and mechanisms of the strand beasts. I have applied how the different mechanisms are being used while developing the strand beasts. I have documented, verified, organized and summarized all the information given in the video. Finally, I have justified why the strand beasts were created. The stomach is a muscular hollow organ in the gastrointestinal tract of humans and many other animals. The stomach has a dilated structure and functions as a vital digestive organ. In the digestive system, the stomach is involved in the second phase of digestion following chewing. It performs a chemical breakdown due to enzymes and hydrochloric acid. Let's learn more about this vital organ. Let's compare a balloon with a stomach. Both start out small when they are empty. Both turn big when they are filled. And both have a breaking point. But here's the difference. As the balloon is inflated, there is a fixed relationship between pressure and volume. As the pressure increases, so does the volume. That relationship isn't necessarily so in the stomach, as the state is determined by not only how much you put in it, but mostly nerve inputs from the brain and hormones. A resting stomach can hold from 6.5 to 10 fluid ounces, but this can double the moment you start eating or even start salivating or thinking about food. A hot dog eating champion in 2017 consumed 72 hot dogs. That's about 2 gallons worth of food. All in all, your brain has the final say in how much you can eat. There have only been 6 documented cases of perfectly healthy stomachs exploding from eating too much. So pretty much, they cannot explode. That, ugh, I ate too much feeling usually occurs when your stomach has 16 to 50 fluid ounces. Finally, the stomach is an amazing, wondrous thing we take for granted every day. Be honest, always listen to your stomach when it says no. While learning about the stomach's capacity, I have observed how the speaker had compared the stomach with the balloon. I have inferred that the stomach state depends not only on how much we eat, but also on nerve inputs and our hormones. I have also defined the importance of the stomach. I have documented the different facts related to the stomach. Finally, I have verified, organized, summarized and justified about the importance of the stomach. Hi, now I am going to be speaking about how bird poop can change the world. Peruvian bird poop, also known as guano, is rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. This is so because as birds don't pee, all that nitrogen and phosphorus comes out in a goo form with their poop. In Peru, there is a dry climate. So unlike other places where when rain falls, all the bird poops, nitrogen and phosphorus will be washed out. In Peru, the nutrients in the poop will stay and they will be used for crops. So, in the 1840s, in Sandy Spring, Maryland, in America, some farmers could not continue growing crops because their, so their soil uh, was not fertile enough. So, 
they were planning to move away to another place so that they could grow crops but they heard about this peruvian guano it was imported from peru to baltimore so they brought a few packets of bird poop and started uh, spreading them across the field when they did so as there is a lot of phosphorus and nitrogen which, which is essential for plants to grow immediately plants started to grow much better as plants take in nutrients when they grow for the next crops to grow there should be enough nitrogen and phosphorus in the in the dirt so peruvian guano was used frequently for plants to grow much better so after watching the video about peruvian guano i inferred that as peruvian guano was rich in nitrogen and phosphorus it could be used for plants to grow and it was very useful so now our second section comes into play the name of it is science mysteries Before we get deep into the section I would like to give you a gist about scientific mysteries and hypotheses scientific mysteries are the mysteries which cannot be solved by science hypothesis is a proposed explanation or a theory for a phenomenon hypotheses are based on previous observations and their connections to the event Now it's time to discuss about the hypothesis we have for the scientifically mysterious places. So the first mysterious place is Devil's Kettle. The Devil's Kettle at Minnesota is one of the most intriguing of scientific mysteries. At a particular point along the Brule River, the river splits into two, one part continuing into the Lake Superior and the other part mysteriously disappearing. Scientists have attempted to locate its location using dice and ping pong balls, all to no success. According to scientific laws water should turn up somewhere should have markings and should be traceable I hypothesize that the water may be entering the mantle and then vaporizing without any trace skills used making skills by analyzing what may have happened So now let us know about the second scientifically mysterious place which is Hesdalen lights Residents of Hesdalen Valley in Norway observe that lights appear in the sky every night they look bright and shift their places regularly no one have any idea on why this is happening and it slowly turned to a scientific mystery i hypothesize that these lights appear in the sky because of the reflection of the sun rays on moon and then to a water body near that place when moon changes its position the light will even shift its position skills used thinking skills by thinking critically on what actually happened Now we are heading towards the third scientifically mysterious place which is Mobile Cave. There was a cave in southeastern Romania which was locked up for 5 million years in the slightest light also could not pass through. If we move forward we could see a lake filled with sulfur which is stinking. The air was contaminated with hydrogen sulfide and 10 times more carbon dioxide than on the surface of Earth. But surprisingly, there was a whole new ecosystem living. The species found there were not living in the whole Earth, but only in this poisonous cave. My hypothesis is that the organisms over there must have adapted to the harmful conditions. That is why they are able to survive over there. Skills used: thinking skills by thinking critically on what actually happened. Now it's time to discuss about the fourth. scientifically mysterious place which is lake karachi the soviet union had many nuclear factories and most of them are unsafe inside one such factory there's a lake which has a lot of radioactive material and if a person stands there for an hour he or she will die i hypothesize that due to the dumping waste nuclear waste and an explosion in 1945 made the lake dangerous and consists of radioactive material the picture to the bottom of the right shows the explosion place and the lake beside it skills used thinking skills by comprehending the video and by analyzing the mystery now over to likit 
of the double tree of Casarzo. In Italy, there is a cherry tree which is like any other cherry tree, but it grows directly on top of a mulberry tree. Quite strange, isn't it? The locals believe that the bird has threw a, a cherry seed on the mulberry tree and it grew. My hypothesis is that th this cherry tree must have found by a person who makes two seeds genetical properties into one and must have planted it. Skills used. Thinking creatively to make a creative hypothesis. The Sleeping City of Kalaji The Sleeping City of Kalaji in Kazakhstan, people face a peculiar epidemic where the citizens fall suddenly and reported that they have diseases. I hypothesize that there might be toxic gases present in that area which is causing people to fall there. Skills developed. Thinking skills by analyzing how this incident is up. The Circles of Namibia this is, this is a ecologically a mysterious place. These circles are located in the Namib desert. These circles have no proper scientific explanation. One theory suggests that it's, it is made due to parasites, but it was again disapproved in 2015. Now we don't have any proper explanation. My hypothesis is that these circles might have formed due to heavy raindrops. Skills used. I used, I used research skills to interpret my data and thought carefully to hypothesize. The hum of the TARS. The people of Taos in Mexico daily hear an unbearable and constant humming sound since 1990. I hypothesize that it might be some animals which make loud noises. Skills used thinking skills by thinking critically on the hypothesis. One of the most mysterious places on earth, the Bermuda Triangle. For decades, the Atlantic Ocean's fabled Bermuda Triangle has captured the human imagination with unexplained disappearances of ships planes and people. I hypothesize that due to the bad weather conditions and high tides, the ships, planes and people have been disappeared. Skills used. Th uh, I use thinking skills by comprehending and analyzing the video to write the hypothesis. What is an experiment? Experiment is a test or the act of trying out a new course of action. Now, I will be doing the experiment, layered liquids from the video 10, 10 amazing experiments with water in the section science plus. Here's the concept behind the experiment. The different liquids which, which were poured into the glass, which were ghee, oil, uh, dishwashing liquid, water, and alcoholic sanitizer, were arranged into layers because of their different densities. Density is the amount of mass in each unit of volume. That is measured using mass by volume. The more the density, the more the weight. So, the heavier liquids settled at the bottom, whereas the lighter liquids settled at the top. So that means that water is denser than oil. As in water, the particles are tightly arranged, the water is settled at the bottom, whereas oil has loosely packed particles, so it settled at the top. Before doing the experiment, I have predicted that the different liquids will arrange into different layers. I have observed that after pouring all the different liquids in the glass, they arranged into different layers after a few seconds. I have inferred that the different liquids arranged into different layers because of the differences in their properties. I have verified the cause of this phenomenon by doing research. I have sorted and classified my observations by using the facts that I have gathered. 
Finally, I have communicated the information by explaining the important facts that I have understood. We all know tennis, but do you know what governs tennis? Is it humans or the nature? Let's find out. We watched a video and we were given a few questions. So, so let's answer the questions. The first question. There are two sets of rules which govern a tennis game. What are they? One set of the rules are man-made and the other set of the rules are the natural rules. Second question. What are the man-made rules which govern tennis? Can these rules be changed? The man-made rules which govern tennis are the size of the court, ball, ball weight, weight of the racket and the duration of the match. Yes, these rules can be changing depending on situation or by the governing body. By doing this activity, we developed certain skills. Skills developed are learn, learn to observe keenly the experiment, learn to analyze the experiment. We improved our demonstration skills by demonstrating our scientific experiments of water. We as a group improved our reasoning skills by researching and reasoning about them. We as a group apply our, applied our knowledge by demonstrating few experiments. We as a group documented our work in research in various formats. So, as we are done with Science Plus, let's come to the next segment, which is Biomimicry. First, let's know what is Biomimicry. Biomimetics or Biomimicry is the imitation of the models, systems and elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. The first topic in Biomimicry is the Bullet Train. In 1989, Shinkansen Bullet Train had a problem. It was really fast like a pushing 170 miles per hour. Whenever a train spread into a tunnel, it pushed a compressed wave. It always ended with a sonic boom. But every time it exited a tunnel, it was loud. What, what was the solution for this problem? The head of the bullet trains is actually a birder, is actually a birder thought why can't the bullet train have a kingfisher's nose and smooth surface as a seal as well as the wings of the kingfisher. Now here comes the second topic which is pretty much interesting in biomimicry. How did antibacterial surface evolve? How does nature repel bacteria? Galapagos shark. It has no bacteria on its surface, no, f no fouling on its surface no barnacles and it's not because it goes fast it actually basks so how does it keep its body free from bacteria buildup it does it it turns out with the same denticles that that you had on speedo bathing suits that broke all so the next topic is fog catching nets nambian desert it has no fresh water that it's able to drink but it drinks water out of fog. How awful. They, they have water loving tips and waxy slides. And the fog comes in, the, in and it builds up on the tips. It goes down the slides and goes into the critter's mouth. There is, ac there is actually a scientist here at Oxford who studied this. Andrew Packer. Now here comes the last topic in biomimicry. Recipe from the coral CO2 as a building block Plants and organisms that make shells coral think of it as a building block. There is now a cement manufacturing company starting in the United States called Calera. They have borrowed the recipe from the coral reef and they are using CO2 as the building block in cement in concrete. Instead of cement, instead of cement usually emits a ton of CO2 for every ton of cement. Now it's reversing that equation and actually sequestering half a ton of CO2. Last but not least, we come to the final segment of science, which is Virtual Tour Space Station. Now I'm gonna explain my understanding after watching three videos. A journey 
I understood that a journey in space station space station is not so easy for any astronaut to travel because of the gravity and the less possibility of the resources. From the video of Sunita Williams, I infer that the daily life in space is very interesting such as eating food, doing exercise and excreting in the space. The virtual space walk was amazing because it shows different parts of an astronaut suit and also showcases the experience of the same space walk. If our brain is the candle, then the knowledge is the fire on it. So, I would like to give some additional information about the, on the videos I watched. Career at NASA, please look on the screen and improve or gain your knowledge.